Let's kick things off this hour, though, with Paul Schatz. He is the Heritage Capital President and CIO. And Paul, I want to start with that news that we got from China overnight. There's certainly uh, no secret these two countries have been really going tit for tat over the last several weeks. Uh, you know, the question is how much of this is really about a shift in tone from the Trump administration really trying to go after China? How much of this is all political? What do you think? I think it's all the latter. Look, you've got, what, 100-ish days till the election. Trump's base wants him to be tough on China. He campaigned on being tough with China. He's tried to be tough with China. I think this is all another shot across the bow that's going to amount to absolutely nothing for the economy, nothing for the markets. This is going to, and from Trump's perspective, I think he's trying to recharge and energize his base because his base has clearly has is having some problems. I don't think anything's going to come from it. I think it's all tit for tat. It's, if this was the Fed, we'd say they were jawboning. Uh, Paul, there is that question, though, about you know whether there is this risk of a misstep on either side. It may just be rhetoric now, but what happens when things start to escalate? Um, and then, of course, you've got the additional purchases that are coming into the fall when we still have that phase one trade deal in place. How do you think investors should be looking at some of the rhetoric that it's coming from both sides in terms of the risk that it presents. So this is my takeaway, not just for this particular situation, but this is my, my one of my overall themes of investing. It's not necessarily what the news actually is, but how the markets react. We are bullish on China right now, and I've been bullish on China the last few months. We own a couple of the Chinese ETFs. Uh, FXI, P PGJ, I think investors have to be careful, just like with the virus, when the economy reopened, coronavirus cases soared, people were scratching their heads saying, how could the markets go up? It's always important to look at the reaction. I don't think the markets really care about the verbal spat between the Chinese and the US between Trump and, and Xi Jinping. It, I just don't think it matters for more than a percent here or a percent there. I think you gotta focus on the fact that the Chinese economy, whether we like it or not, is strong and getting stronger. And that's likely to be the case going forward. So Paul, let's talk about a sector that has helped push the market higher. That's tech. We have seen two straight days um, of declines. Um, you know, there is an argument, I guess, to be made that there's some rotation happening out of tech now, which was inevitable. But it's looking through your notes. You say NASDAQ 100's performance or outperformance ends this quarter. Are we already starting to see that unwind? We are. And I, and I said it with some of your colleagues uh, what, a couple of weeks ago. I wrote a bunch of pieces on our blog. So it wasn't just a one day off the cuff. I wrote a bunch of pieces on the blog just that the NASDAQ 100 relative to the rest of the market, was as stretched as it's been, even including the dot-com bubble. This, While this is not a bubble in large cap tech, it's certainly gotten to an historic, epic extreme. And usually when that happens, I'll say the vast majority of the time, you don't need a market collapse, but one of two things happen. The whole market comes down and tech comes down more than the market, or you get this rotation out of tech into other areas. So I think what's going to happen is I think the performance we've seen in those handful of stocks that lead the NASDAQ 100, I think they're, they're healthily correcting right now. They're pulling back. This is nothing wrong with it. I mean, they've grown to the sky. And then I think in the next rally, which may start in August or September, I think you'll see a different group lead, a broadening out, if you will. You'll see some sectors that have been missing some love get some love perhaps in the fall. Paul, what do you say, though, to, to those who, who say that the long-term growth story is still intact for these companies? I mean, even, even if we're not just talking big tech, you know, sort of the fang names, um, you know, we've seen the growth you in their numbers. Be, you have to be really careful with that argument because – the long-term growth story could stay fully intact and, and the fundamentalists could be spot on exactly right. However, the market may revalue your company from let's say 40 times earnings to 25 or 30 times earnings. So they'll get that part right, but they won't make any money in the stock. And that's the trap that so many investors get caught up in. They look at a stock and say, oh boy, uh, the fundamental growth story is wonderful. It's not going to change going forward, but they 
but the stock does nothing or trends mildly lower for a few years. And that's the market catching up the fundamentals. So be very careful when stocks are that stretched and that relatively expensive. They don't have to, the, the, the story could stay intact, but you could still not make money from it. Uh, just really quickly. Just like when, 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 when companies are in collapse and all of a sudden they start to rally and the fundamentals still stink. I want to just, before we let you go, really quickly get your thoughts on commodities, because we're looking at gold and silver uh, surging this week, silver hitting a seven-year high. And you've talked about how you actually have been conservative, that you think there's a real tailwind for gold. What do you think is going to be the catalyst? Yeah, so I was on with you guys the first week of January, and I said, gold 3,000 is, is my target. I said, I know it sounds crazy. I think it may be conservative. The, to me, I didn't foresee a pandemic, frankly. Uh, but for me, the big tailwind for gold and the metals, and they are overextended right now. So short term, they could certainly retrench. But the long term tailwind for gold is Europe. Europe is too big to save and too big to fail. They're, they're going to have to pick one horrible solution in Europe. They either if they save the euro, that's wildly bullish for gold because they're going to have to do unthinkable things. And if they don't save the euro in Europe, that's even more bullish for gold. So I think you know, two, three, four years out, it's really bullish for gold. This could be that that run like we saw into 1980, where we maybe will go 2,500, 3,000, 4,000. Once you get going, who knows where the target is because markets get kind of maniacal. But the tail, the real tailwind for gold has not been seen yet. This is the appetite. Right. Okay, we're going to hold you to that and maybe check in with you in the next few months. Paul Schatz, the Heritage Capital President, joining us there. Thanks so much for your time. Have a good weekend. You too.